I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Does your bedroom make you want to sleep or shriek? Hi, this is Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today's episode is how to design the perfect bedroom. And there's a lot of parts to this room, more than you would think. And it may be a small room, but there is a lot to pull together, wouldn't you say, Kelly? Yes. And I also think it's a difficult room because you really, some of the things are really crucial because you're doing things and they're like sleeping. And so they have to be right. So you can relax, it can be zen, you can get the right, the lighting right and all these things. So we're going to cover so many tips today for all the aspects of creating a perfect bedroom. And I also think it's oftentimes the last room or a room that people don't even get to because we're generally more concerned about the public spaces or the spaces that the rest of our family is going to be using or enjoying. And I know for myself, my master bedroom has always sort of been the last on the list. But it is such an important room. Think about it. It's the first room that you see when you open up your eyes in the morning. And it's the last room that you see when you go to sleep at night. So you want it to be absolutely perfect, but perfect for you. So we're going to have so many tips and they are going to apply to just about everyone, but then you are going to want to make it your own, like we tell you to do about all the rooms in your home. So we want you to be happy if someone says, go to your room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, so that'll be a plus instead of a minus. And I remember when my kids were little, a lot of times I would say, mommy's going to time out. So... <laughs> I'm being punished, so don't come in. (laughs) I love it. You put yourself in your own room. I would like that too. So when you walk into your bedroom, what do you feel? I think that's a good thing to do before we get started. Maybe pause for a second and walk in your bedroom and kind of take it all in, figure out the vibe that you're getting, because it should be a vibe that's working for you. You know, you want it to be restful, relaxing, and to have your personality in there. So take a look. And if it doesn't, there's some things you can do to make it a little more to your taste. Yeah. And if you feel that way, then you absolutely have to keep listening till the Mm -hmm. end. That's right. And why make the guest room nicer than your bedroom? Yeah. This should be the room that really reflects who you are and you should be happy with it. As Anita was saying, stand in the doorway, see how the room makes you feel. That is so important, that visceral reaction to the room. If you would be happy to send yourself to your room, then you're on the great track. And maybe you're just going to add a few little things that we're talking about today. But if you stand in the doorway and you think, oh gosh, or you get to the point where you're just crawling up the stairs or crawling through that doorway at night and you're pushing laundry off the bed and you're crawling in and falling asleep, that's not what we want your room to be or to be used for. We want you to want to be in there and to enjoy it while you're there. And one thing that is very important that people might not take into consideration is the the alignment of your room. Is it north facing, south, east, west? Where are the windows? Uh, think about all of that. That would be a foundational consideration for how you're going to treat the room, whether it be wall color or bed position. So that's something that I would figure out if I didn't know it uh, right off the bat. And I'm not so great with compass direction. You know, if I was... (laughs) <laughs> if I okay. was your Thelma or Louise, you might not ask me to tell you which direction we were going in. So, but it's easy when you, if you, especially since you're sleeping in there, 
and you're probably most of us waking up in the morning rather than working at night and and sleeping during the day. So when you wake up, where's the sun? Can you see it? Is it rising right in front of you? And then you can align yourself and figure out where your room is vis-a-vis a a compass direction. And then take that information and plug it in as we're going along with these other tips. That's right. So not only do you need to know how your room is positioned in respect to the world and where the sun is rising and setting, but also when you walk into the room, where is the bed when you walk into the room? Now, ideally, you want to face your bed. You want to see your headboard as you walk into the room, but some rooms will not allow that because I think you're going to want room for the bed and two nightstands to be not obstructing any windows. Uh, So like at our farm, we had to make the bed on the wall that you're walking into. You know, it's right next to the door. That's where the headboard is. But I think that's not ideal. If you can set your bed so that you can see it right as you walk in the room, I really think that's going to give it that focal point right as you walk in the room. That's a great positioning of the bed. But as you mentioned, that might not work for everybody. So when you're looking at the room, As we say for all the other space in your house, look at it with fresh eyes. Just because your bed's in one spot doesn't mean it has to stay there. Yeah, that's right. And like I said, I really don't like if a bed or the dresser or the nightstands are blocking windows. If the window's above it, I think that's okay. But, you know, my windows kind of go down pretty low. And if I shifted the bed somewhere or if I went with a larger bed, my my nightstand would be blocking part of the window. So that's something to think about. So the next thing to think about is your bed size. So you need to get the right size bed for the room. A lot of rooms in the U.S. can handle a king size bed. I think ideally uh, the look is better for a queen size bed. But, you know, so looks wise, if I'm going to photograph a room, my preference is a queen size bed. But my preference if I'm sleeping in the bed is a king size bed. So there is that dilemma. And can your room, if you want a king size bed, can your room even handle a king size bed? So that's something to keep in mind. And Well, uh, size matters, as we know. And right. I definitely like to sleep in a king size bed. I agree with you. A queen size bed probably looks better in a lot of normal size rooms, but I have always been used to sleeping in a king size bed since we've been married and we have the dogs and I kind of do let them sleep with us. So we (laughs) need more room. But even before them, we had to do this. Did you know, besides the California King, which isn't really bigger in a sense, because it's not as wide as a regular king size bed, it's just longer. But did you know that there's Emperor, Wyoming King, Super Emperor, Caesar, Texas king and Alaskan king size beds? Well, that is so interesting you say that. No, I didn't know about those, but I had a stylist and a photographer out uh, to shoot our farm for a magazine a few years ago, and I remember the stylist walking in our bedroom, and now it's a king size bed, but I do like a tall bed, so it's tall enough that you do have to kind of, I have to get on my tiptoes to kind of, you know, shimmy up into the bed. She walked into the bedroom, and I could tell she did not like it. She said, how big is this bed? And I said, oh, it's just a regular king size. And she said, I thought it was much larger than that. And I could tell by the look on her face, that room was not going to be in the magazine. And we kind of walked promptly out. So just kind of be careful about that, because if it is a tall bed, it may end up looking bigger than it really is. Those beds that you're describing, that kind of scares me, putting that in a room. I'm kind of concerned that that might look like the bed she thought I had. Yeah, you need a big size room to handle any of these beds. So just in case anybody's interested or you want to feel like an emperor, the emperor is 84 by 84. By reference, a California king is 72 wide by 84 long. And a regular king is 76 wide, so wider, and 80 long. A Wyoming king is the same size as the emperor. Super Emperor is 90 inches long by 84 inches wide. A Caesar is 96 (laughs) long. I guess that's how you want to feel in your bed. And 84 wide 
Texas King is 98 long and 80 wide. And Alaskan King, that's the jumbo, 108 by 108 square. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you could get a whole family of five in there. Yeah. I mean, in a normal size room, it would just probably go wall to wall. Yeah, <laughs> It'd just yeah. be like a giant trampoline, which I kids would love. I, I, yeah, I don't, I, I'm going to put a thumbs down on all of those. <laughs> well, here's the thing too, Anita, where do you get sheets for that? You'd probably have to get custom sheets. You're not going to get all the choices that we'd like to have organic and linen and all of that or cozy earth sheets and those sizes. So it might be nice to have a bigger space if you need it, but I think it would be really hard to dress your bed. Well, again, I mean, don't you want to be able to walk around your bed and sit in a chair or something? I mean, that is just crazy, that size. Mm -hmm. So, mm, okay. So, uh, like I alluded to earlier, the height of the bed is also important and Mm -hmm. something to think about. A lot of the new platform beds do tend to be very low. Or you can go with a very high bed. And I had in our our guest room here, or Lisey's room, she she uh, actually moved out, but she is here on the weekends. That bed, it was a a memory foam bed, so it did not need a um, a box springs underneath it. But the long drop bedspread I had on it was just sadly pooling uh, on the floor. <laughs> sadly and, pooling. Uh, sadly pooling, and I just thought, in the meantime, I'm going to put in, you know, a foundation underneath it so that the so that the bedspread will go all the full length and it's not going to pool. And so I bought a seven inch foundation, which didn't seem that big. And it's on an antique frame. Well, that bed is now high enough that go up on my tiptoes to get into the bed. I actually love the tall beds, so I like that look, Mm -hmm. but uh, some people may not. So just kind of think about that. And, you know, I'm kind of one of those, it can't be too high. So uh-huh. I wasn't even worried about it. But when I put that on, I'm like, oh, that's tall. <laughs> that's- you, need, you need like a gymnastic uh, yeah. vaulting uh, yes. springboard to get into the bed. Well, and you have it. seen you have seen the little steps that they have sometimes by the bed. So my you know. mom had that in one of her guest rooms in their prior home. It was cute and charming, but maybe not so practical for the everyday. It was fine in the guest room, but I don't know if I would do that. The thing that happens when you have a higher bed is it also enables you to have some storage under there. Now, that's not supposed to be really so great for your feng shui or, you know, sort of ridding yourself of the clutter that we're always telling you to get rid of. We don't want you stuffing stuff under your bed just because you can because it's further off the floor. But if you do need some storage, then that is a primo place, particularly for off-season clothing. Maybe you get some of those nice uh, boxes and you can just slide the larger boxes with your sweaters or whatnot under your bed. And that could be really useful. So for that, you would need those risers, right? Mm -hmm. To kind of raise it up. Yeah. Well, maybe, or just if your bed happens to be a taller bed, you know, some beds are just closer to the Mm -hmm. ground, Mm -hmm. you know, and obviously if it's a platform bed, you're not going to get that unless you have the drawers and and things like that. But just rifting off that is the bed skirt. Now, maybe when people think of a bed skirt, they're thinking sort of a Laura Ashley ruffly situation. You don't need to have a bed skirt that's like that, but a bed skirt is quite nice to finish off a bed. It can be very tailored. It can be super simple, you know, just a drop of fabric, but a nice fabric. That does a lot to finish off a bed, especially if you've got things stored under there and then you don't get to have to see them when you're looking, at, you know, walking into the room. And if your bed is positioned where Anita's saying is ideal, which I do agree is a great spot where you're walking in and you're looking directly at the bed and your eyes going towards the headboard, then obviously you would see under the bed. So if you're going to put anything under there, I would suggest that you do some sort of a bed skirt. I agree. I love a bed skirt and I've made quite a few because I couldn't find one exactly the height that I wanted and I wanted it in linen and that sort of thing. Although those are easier to find now, but it, that is a very finished look. And especially if you have a duvet on there, I think you really do want that finished look on the bed. But if you have a bedspread, you may may not need that. Now, another thing to talk about with your bed is the mattress. This is a very important part of the bed because that is going to help you sleep. We did an entire episode on mattresses. You can listen to that. That's episode 384. So we don't want to go into detail here on that. You can go listen to that. Uh, the, The only key thing I want to take out of that whole episode is to think about, is your mattress 
organic if you're buying a new one. And, you know, when I first heard about organic mattresses, I said, wait, I'm not going to be eating this. Do I really need it to be organic? But you know, have they really kind of maybe gone overboard on this whole? Is that what those avocado beds are all about? It's actually yes. an avocado and a bed. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But the thing about the organic beds is that it's not just that they use organic material, but they also work to make it the healthiest possible for you. So they really try to make sure that it's not off-gassing some really toxic fumes while you're sleeping on it. And that is a problem with a lot of these beds. Mm, put that way, it would really want you, you'd really want to go organic. But you know, you think it's the next step from eating it. Your face planted on it. Yes, yes. I mean, even even if you're a back sleeper, your face is pretty close to it for many hours. And it's and you're talking about these gases that are surrounding you. So yeah, maybe you don't want to invest in a new mattress right now if yours isn't organic and it's still in pretty good shape. But when when and if you're at the point where you need a new mattress, seriously consider and do your research about the organic mattresses. Yeah, I think it'll be worth your while. And when we got ours, we actually got a, an Aura mattress. Um, we That one's a hybrid. So that's, um, anyway, again, I, I won't go into it because you can go listen to what a hybrid mattress is. But it's very comfortable, and uh, I'm really glad we, we got it. <laughs> I don't know what I ever mind. Is it? We, I, I will re-listen to the episode because I can't remember. <laughs> what is a, Is it like, does it take gas and, and it's electric? I don't know what a hybrid mattress is, but I'm going to definitely go listen to 384 again because I can't remember. Kelly, yeah, I think you're going to need to go go back and listen. <laughs> so how about the headboard? Now, this can be a spot where you can have a lot of fun, particularly if your room is smaller and there's not an opportunity to have a lot of other interesting aspects or another focal point. I mean, heck, some people have giant rooms with fireplaces in them where they can have a sitting area and all that, but most of us do not. So a headboard can be a real pop in a room that's an average size. You can have it upholstered. You can use a, a slip cover. I think Anita's even made slip covers for headboards. And of course, you can have a traditional wood or metal. Think about how you're going to use it. Are you a person who likes to sit up in bed and read? Then maybe you'd want something upholstered where it's a little more cushy. If it's upholstered, it also gives you opportunity to add more softness to the room and another layer. That being said, I love a metal bed or a, a headboard that's made of wood. Headboards are also can be thrifted quite easily, especially if it's a smaller size bed. You don't usually see kings or California kings in the wooden sort of older, more traditional type bed frame, including the headboard, but definitely queens, doubles, fulls, and twins. I mean, you can pick those up for a song and you it's really nothing. It's, I mean, yes, it's someone else, somebody else that slept in the bed, but you're, it's not like you're buying their mattress. Right? So it's just right, the right. rails, the headboard, and maybe the footboard. So that's a fun thing to be able to get for a lower price. And then you could paint it, you could strip it, you could do all kinds of fun things to it. Another opportunity to get an interesting headboard is this company, The Inside. Do you? Know, I, I think we've talked about them before. It's a smaller company that came out a few years ago, and it's very design uh, driven. So they have a lot of interesting pieces, and the prices are actually quite good. And they have a variety of patterns that you can have either headboards made in or full beds, or you can have little benches, you know, like the X bench that you might see in a bedroom and they'll have it fully upholstered and they'll have, you know, several different fabric choices. So check out the inside. They have some really beautifully shaped headboards and then some beautiful fabrics that you can choose to put on there. Oh, that sounds exciting. I need to check them out. And I have to tell you, my bed, ha it's an iron and brass headboard from Charles P. Rogers that we bought ages ago. And it was pretty expensive at the time. So we've kept that uh, on our bed. But for the guest room in the garage apartment, I put a nice kind of French style upholstered headboard. And every time I go out there, I think, oh, that looks so comfortable for sitting up in bed because ours isn't. Right. And I keep thinking, I really need to switch that headboard out and just put the cheap upholstered one in my bedroom because that would be so much more comfortable. 
Yes. And if you have even a Hollywood frame, you can do a really inexpensive headboard from Wayfair or Overstock and you just attach it with the bolts. And so you maybe you're talking about 150 tops, 250 for a nice upholstered headboard. They're really not that expensive new from a company like that. Uh, another thing to think about when you're talking about the frame of the bed is, are you going to have a footboard? My thought is in a smaller room, maybe to forego the footboard because mm -hmm. it is a stop. And particularly if your bed is able to be positioned in this ideal spot where it's across from the entryway. So you're looking at the bed, your eye is going to stop at the footboard. Then it's going to see whatever's on the bed. And then, of course, see the headboard or what have you, whatever behind it. So it might feel like it's sort of you know, visually stopping the action in the room. And it's just another element that is not really necessary that will add visual noise to the room. So how do you feel about a headboard with a footboard, Anita? Well... I love the footboards too. You know, growing up, I did not have a headboard or a footboard, and I felt so deprived. So I decided oh, after that. Oh, gosh, every... I hate <laughs> when you do this. <laughs> so, did oh, you have a mattress? Did you have a mattress? Yes, but I think it off gassed. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, my God, I have to go get a Kleenex. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so I mean, I love the footboards, but, you know, in our guest room at the farm, there's three beds, there's three twin beds, and to kind of take away the visual noise like you're, ta like you're talking about, I chose not to use a footboard on those beds, because I felt like that would be too much. But uh, most of our beds do have the footboard, but but not all of them. Uh, another thing that you can think I love about, that you have, like, tons and tons of beds now, with footboards, <laughs> without footboards. Day beds. Day beds. Just beds, beds, beds. Let's get back to that gorgeous room that you have at the farm with the three beds. Mm -hmm. Now, you have an interesting treatment over them, sort of a tester type thing that you change right. out occasionally, right? So do you want to talk about that while we're in that room? Well, we have a cornice. I mean, it, it's from uh, uh, Restoration Hardware. I think the Restoration Hardware baby, but it's kind of a French a cornice above each bed, and then there's a curtain, a linen curtain behind each bed. So that's kind of what we did. Um, and it's just kind of a soft linen fabric that's white. And I don't really change it out. I just keep the white. And then if we change, I do change the bedding on the bed, but the white goes with everything. But just with those three, because there's three beds in there, whatever you do in there, it's the visual impact is times three. So it's just very nice to have something kind of beautiful like that on the wall behind the beds. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's a treatment that other people could do in any size room. So you're calling it a cornice. Would you also say that, that some people would call that a half tester? So yes, there's yes. something on the wall that allows the, the fabric or the drapery panel to be attached to it, right? That just kind of swoops onto either side of the bed. Am I just Well, I would agree. Correctly? I would agree that it's a tester, but just for people who don't know what that is, that's why I'm calling it a cornice. That's kind of what it looks like. It's a wooden piece that's kind of curved and carved that goes above the bed, and then it holds a curtain. So that's, Did we uh, not just define tester? Yes, yes we so did. People should know what it is. They should be paying attention. That's, that's true. But along those lines, so that's something you could do instead of a headboard or in addition to, head, to a headboard. A few other things that are a similar look is if you put a tapestry behind your headboard or in place of a headboard or a rug. And when we were working on uh, Texas Flip and Move, I think one time I was there without you and I used a rug behind a bed instead of a headboard. So that's certainly something you can do. And that would be comfortable if you leaned up against it in the bed. Yes, you don't have to have a traditional headboard that's attached to your mattress and attached to the frame. You could even do a giant piece of art. Now, obviously, you're not going to sit up a bed and lean against it. But if that worked for you, or you could make it an accent wall, maybe you do some wallpaper behind it, but something to add to the sense of the bed and the wall being a focal point in the room. Right. And it extends that look all the way up pretty close to the ceiling. So it really does give the bed more presence in the room. And That's a great point, too, because when you think about a bedroom, if you don't have a large piece of art somewhere in the room that's hung higher, and if you forego draperies 
And so there's really nothing flanking the windows that's going up higher. A lot of the things are sort of on the down low, right? There's a big expanse of the bed, no matter what size bed you have. It's still a big expanse that's sort of even be- it's below eye level. Then the nightstands are going to be also of sort of below eye level. Maybe you have a dresser. There's not a lot of opportunity to get some height in the room. So I love the idea of doing this cornice or or the half tester or something up higher that's going to pull the bed together and with it and make it feel like you're, you know, you bring your eye up so you can appreciate the height of the room as well. Right. And I'll link to the, that bedroom so you can see what we're talking about. So another thing to think about is, are you going to go bedspread, coverlet, or duvet? And there's a lot of different options here. My personal favorite, if I could just have one bed and do that one bed, I would do the long drop bedspread, which is my absolute favorite, but you can do a coverlet then with the bed skirt or the duvet with the bed skirt. Or if you have a platform bed, just the duvet or the coverlet, and then you don't need the bed skirt. And, you know, uh, with Evie's room, I had made a beautiful, I thought beautiful long drop bedspread with this really not inexpensive twall fabric. And so when she moved out, I thought, you know what? She never makes her bed. She never makes her bed. So I thought... (laughs) Why am I sending, why am I going to send this, my my favorite bedspread with her? So I just said, you know what? I'm just going to keep this. You know, I know you don't really like this, so I'll keep this. And I'm going to send you. You just don't like this. I know you don't. (laughs) You don't like this. I'm just thinking about you, darling. This thing you don't like, I'm keeping to to keep it from you. (laughs) So I said, you know what? I've got, I know pink is your favorite color. So I've got this really pretty dusty pink linen duvet cover and I'll give you the duvet and it's ruffled. It's got matching shams and sheets. I said, take that and put that on your bed. And she said, mom, she said, it is so much easier to make my bed. She said, I'm making my bed a lot more because it's so much easier to make my bed. Oh yeah. Who knew all this time I could have had a bed made bed here if I had (laughs) just put now, of course it's my fault. You know that. Well, Also there's that the easiest is that if your mom makes your bed. So it's just <laughs> that. Yes. Right. It's easy, but it's not the easiest. No, that's a good point. But there's some other options too. If you, um, let's say you didn't want to go with a bedspread or a duvet or whatever, another really cool look is if you go with a Pendleton blanket. And that's kind of more that Ralph Lauren look, kind of the great, you know, Western states. It's very kind of ranch like. Those are really beautiful. If you decided to go with one of those blankets, I would go a size up from what your bed actually is. And if you feel like those are too expensive, there is a similar look if you go with a Swiss Link blanket. That's the brand. And you can get them for a lot less uh, at Overstock. So that's another option. If you want something even different than that, how about trying a Suzanne embroidered bed cover? You can. Those are handmade and uh, you'll have to get them from some place like Etsy or eBay, but those are really beautiful. Or if you if that's even just too much, how about buying a very rough linen sheet and go with an oversized one? And not just one that looks like a cotton sheet, but one of those very thick, rough linen sheets and just drape that over the bed. And I've seen that done very beautifully. Oh, I love the whole idea of dressing the bed. It's so fun to switch it up. So yeah, I love all those ideas. Now I do like a duvet, but man, are they hard sometimes because the, <laughs> they slide, yeah, yeah. they slide and yeah. then the buttons and the little ties. I must say now, Cozy Earth is a sponsor of ours, but they are a sponsor of ours because we love them. I did invest in the Cozy Earth duvet and the in, the duvet cover and the duvet itself. It is unlike any duvet I've ever had before. Oh, so when I'm saying duvet, I mean what somebody might call like the the inside, the fluffy part, right? It, it because it's the bamboo, the viscose from bamboo. It's light, but it has this heft to it where it sort of sits on you. Where I don't know if you've had this experience with other duvets where they're kind of too fluffy or they're feather and then all the feathers go to one side or one end. And, you know, it's just not, this is uniform, 
yet it has this sort of staying power in a sense where it it stays on top of you. It doesn't slide all around. It's not super thick and puffy and it glides right into the duvet cover, which is this beautiful, I got this with the dove gray, the lighter gray, and it's almost like a satiny sheen to it and super easy to go inside. And it's not a situation where if I'm making the bed, I have to take it all off and then, you know, like, I don't, like kind of whack it out. <laughs> right. Is it, is, is the duvet channeled? Is it, does it have channels in it? Because that can help keep the filling evenly distributed. Yes, it does. It has very good channels in it, okay, but I've good. had experiences where other ones with feathers have channels too, but the feathers just kind of, you know, they just like swim their way to <laughs> one side or whatever. Okay. And, um, but this viscose from bamboo doesn't do that. It stays in place, but even the inside, the inside of the inside, if you will, if that's in place, sometimes then the duvet moves inside the cover. Yes. And it becomes so problematic. Yes, and you're trying that. to stick your arm in there and shove it down to the corner. This, you don't have to fluff around. You don't have to whack it out to make it stay. It just stays as it is. So it's not inexpensive, but I did use our DTT discount. So I, oh, people good. can try that. Good. I don't know if it's still applicable, but you can give it a whirl. I think the last one we have was uh, Podcast 40, I believe it was. It was 40% off. So give it a try if you're interested in that. I'm really happy with their sheets are gorgeous and so comfy, but this combo of the duvet and the duvet cover. So I wouldn't try to put somebody else's duvet inside their duvet cover because I don't think you're going to get the satisfaction that oh, I have from the combo. Well, that's a good point. And here's a designer tip too. Oh, designer if your tip. duvet is too flat and you want a fluffy duvet look, you put in two duvets in your duvet cover. You're a devil and to do yeah, that. Double yes. them. Now, I, because my beds are so tall, most of them, I don't do that because then it's going to look really like the princess and the pea. But if your bed is kind of lower, I think that's yeah. a beautiful, very lush look to see that folded at the foot of the bed. And, oh, it's just so dreamy. And you just want to jump into the bed. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show. But keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOS to your wellness regime. DOS is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with DOS to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing DOS two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. 
Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. If you have hardwood floors, I think you're going to want a rug in there. And here's the rub. You want the rug to be really, if you just have room for one rug in there, you want it under the bed, but you want it extending out so that you're walking on the rug as you're walking around the bed. So the problem is, and I know the frustration people have is, wait a minute, I'm paying for this super large rug and half of it I can't even use because it's under my bed. And so people want to kind of put it on the side of the bed or at the foot of the bed, but really the proper way to do it is under the bed, but make sure it extends, I would say about, uh, you know, two and a half to three feet all the way around. So that is going to be a larger sized rug, but that is the way it's done. And then you can walk on it and it looks properly sized. If that just is not going to work in your budget, you can go with a slightly smaller rug, turn it sideways, and then just move it up halfway under the bed. So then you're going to be walking on the rug at the foot of the bed and on the sides up to a certain point, maybe about where your, your nightstands are. So that's, that's an option. Actually, my bedroom at home is kind of a a bigger room. So I actually have three rugs in here, but the way I made them all work together is that they are the same shades of blue and cream. So they're three different patterns, but they all work together. A rug is essential. I think some sort of rug in your bedroom Dare I say, some people might even want wall-to-wall carpeting, and that would probably be the only place that I would say, yay, thumbs up to -to wall-to-wall carpeting, (laughs) because some people just love that underfoot when they wake up, and if that's you, then hey, it's your bedroom. We want you to make it you. We want you to have it as your sanctuary. And definitely wall-to-wall carpeting, if it's gorgeous and well-kept, is giving you that cocooning effect. In my primary bedroom... I do not have a rug that goes under the bed and onto either side. It's not a big room at all. Uh, But I did want something on the floor in there because we have the hardwood, which is running through the whole house. So not only for a little bit softness, but for aesthetics, I wanted to have a rug in there. So what I did is between the end of the bed and where the dresser is, I put in a faux hide rug, the one that I love from Erin Gates' collection, and she sells it on Amazon. It was It's not expensive at all, and I can link it in the show notes, and I love it. It's an animal print. It sort of throws off the traditional look of the room a little bit and gives it that little bit of a design tension, but it also is nice underfoot, and it just brings a little more color and pizzazz because I've got a wooden bed and I've got a wood floor, uh, but now I have some gorgeous paint on the wall that I'm going to talk about, but that's the only thing that I have done before for the the floors. I don't have another rug. They're not rugs on either side of the bed. And it really works nicely for us. Oh, that sounds wonderful. And yeah, I think you can be creative, especially if it's a small space, you might want to do something a little bit differently. And if you have, yeah, if it's a small space, maybe you want to join, like I've done, like the dresser and the bed, we're having a smaller rug sort of on the angle. Mine goes a little bit under the bed and it's then anchored a little bit under the dresser, I kind of have it on an angle. And because it's, um, you know, it's not an actual hide, but it is a natural shape. It's, you know, the shape of a hide. Um, it, it works that way. It doesn't seem like, wow, that's a small rectangular rug in a weird spot. Because of the organic shape of it, it really works nicely. But I think if I had a little more space there, I could have used maybe a five by seven or a six by nine rug on it and try it on an angle so it doesn't feel all squared off. And certainly if your room is big enough that you're able to have a little sitting area a couple of chairs or a chaise and maybe a table or something like that. You could put a rug just under that space and then anchor those pieces with the rug and forego a rug under your bed if you felt like you didn't want to go to the expense of having a gigantic rug that's going to be mostly under the bed. 
That's an excellent point. And speaking of chairs, I think it is nice to have a chair or two in the room for you to sit in, to read, or just kind of relax before you go to bed, or maybe when you get up in the morning. Just a nice place to relax. And I also love the look and the functionality of having a bench at the foot of the bed. Uh, Maybe you can sit there and put your shoes on. This isn't for long-term sitting, but just kind of sitting down, like I said, to put shoes on or or whatever when you're getting dressed or undressed at the end of the day. I love that look, and I have seen people go a little hard on that look and put like a whole sofa at the foot of their bed. And I'm here to say, I'm not loving that. Have you seen that? Really? Yes, I have. Like a whole sofa or a a love seat? What is that? Okay, yes, talking about? I, yes, mm-hmm. yes. I, I don't like that look. I feel like it's too heavy. And mm-hmm. it just, I really dislike it like a lot. Because oh, I feel lot. like it's okay. <laughs> a lot. Because I, if okay. you want to put a bench there or a settee, I think something leggy and lighter and airier. Mm-hmm. But like the, the upholstered piece that goes down to the floor with the kick plate. Yeah. I feel like that's no, too no. much. I mean, what what do you think? Yeah, no, I would agree. Certainly something that's going to the ground and and has you know, sort of this real heavy presence because the bed has a big, heavy presence. You know, no matter what kind of bed right. you have, it's still a big piece in the room. So, And I would liken it to what I was saying about the footboard. It's going to be another stop. And I, I don't, I, it, certainly if it was sort of a traditional looking sofa, I think I wouldn't like that either. Maybe a leggy a little love seat, maybe something out of a rattan with a little upholstery on it or something right. like that. I could see some, like one of your little French numbers mm-hmm. in a love seat rather than a chair. I could see something like that. But again, the room's going to have to be big enough to take it. And if, frankly, if the room's big enough to take it, I would pull that piece off the end of the bed because why add it to that big hulking bed a big expanse of bed so i agree with you i'm okay. i'm with you on that one okay for okay, sure good <laughs> uh i re- referenced my new wall color which i love oh in I, my bedroom. when am i gonna get to see it well i did put a little sneaky peeky on my instagram but i'm waiting for the the uh, draperies and then i'm gonna show more of the room but i absolutely love it um, let's harken back to what i said way in the beginning about which way your room's facing, north, south, east, or west. That's going to make a big difference in the color that you choose for the wall or maybe even the wallpaper. Although I would caution you against any big splashy wallpapers, even a big splashy accent wall in a bedroom. It's just not zen enough and you might get tired of it quickly. Maybe small patterns or something like that if you wanted to do with a wall treatment rather than painting or a grass cloth could work nicely. But paint is you know, so much more economical. And if you don't like it, you can always switch it up. So I took a long time to decide in my north facing bedroom that the white that I adore, the simply white, just was not at its best in that room because it's really the darkest room in my house, which I guess is great for sleeping, but I love natural light. I love brightness. So I had so many sampleized samples on the walls and I even got a little pot from Farrow and Ball of the Sudbury yellow and I went for it and I love it. It is this sunshiny yellow. It makes me happy when I wake up in the morning. It takes on a little bit more sophisticated ochre color in the evening. And at three o'clock, that's what, if anyone wanted to come over and see my bedroom, that's when I would invite you over because it's spectacular at that time of day because the sun is just coming in at the right angle and the room glows and it looks so great against the white trim. So Take your time when you're picking your color for your bedroom and, you know, obviously go in the color scheme that makes you the happiest, even if it's a little bit different than what's going on in the rest of your house. You know, we, of course, want the flow and we encourage that all the time, but this is a separate room and you're not going to have company in there normally. So I guess unless you have a, you know, an Alaska king and you're having lots of people over to bounce around on it, you're not going to have too many people in your room. So Use the colors that you love. I would say, in general, people say keep them softer and whatnot, but I went pretty bold with this yellow, and I love it. 
Oh, sounds wonderful. And I know how much you love yellow. It would not work for me. But this is part of personalizing your bedroom so that it works for you. So I get right. that. Yeah, yellow wouldn't be your pick. But maybe if you wanted to ever do like a deep purple or, you know, something like that in the colors that you love, but just going darker or more saturated. Yeah. That yeah. can be fun in the space. Too. As much as I love purple, I'm not sure I'm ready for that on the walls. But... Well, then you need an emperor bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. No, I don't. No, I don't. Uh, I think to soften the room, I really like putting curtains in a bedroom. And although I'm not so much into curtains everywhere, I really do like them in a bedroom because I feel like it's about softness and comfort and coziness. So I really am pro curtain in a bedroom. And if you don't know what to put in there, it linen or velvet is always a classic that looks great. And on the window treatments, I 100% agree. The layering is terrific. And most people are going to want some sort of window treatment in their bedroom. Uh, even if it's not for privacy, you'd want to you keep the light out at certain times. So think about how susceptible you are to light coming in in the morning? Is it really bothering you? Or is there a street light across the street that's coming in? You may want to consider doing something and an outside mount. So if you were going to do Romans or uh, natural wovens or some sort of shade, do an outside mount. Because if you're doing an inside mount, you're still going to get those little lines of light bleeding through. And if you do an inside mount and that is bothering you, you can always add drapery panels on the side. Maybe you don't move them and to close them fully, but they're there and they're, they're also adding a wonderful layer and height to the room, but they would also be covering that little sliver of light that would be coming in. Uh, definitely a great opportunity to add some softness, some color, perhaps even some pattern to your room by using draperies. And, you know, it goes without saying, if you've been listening to us, hang them high. So you can take the full height of the room and help bring your eye up. Absolutely. That's really going to help make those windows look really beautiful. And let's talk mm -hmm. about artwork. Okay. What are you going to put above that bed? Uh, I think people make the mistake of putting something very small up there or kind of not looking at the whole wall as a unit. Because if you're putting things on the left and the right, it may look confused with what's going over on top of the bed. So I kind of like this wall to really mostly just have one really big piece above the bed. Um, and so for my bedroom, I put four botanical prints and it, and it repeats the colors that are in the bedding I have on there. And I really love the look. And it comes together, it, it, you kind of read it as one big big piece of art because they're all they all go together but if you didn't have that just one big piece of artwork I think is nice or you know you can even go minimalistic and just say I'm not putting anything up there and I think that works too well my bed is in front of one of the windows because that is the best position for the bed I tried it on the other side of the room on the one solid wall that we have and it as Anita said it wasn't in the ideal position. You walked into the room and then you, like the bed was off to your left. I like it so much better. I was so hesitant to put the bed in front of the window. So if you have a situation like I do and you your bed really needs to be in front of the, a window, it's okay <laughs> because you can treat the window like it's sort of a piece of art. And then you put your draperies on either side, the ones I'm waiting for to come in now. And that's how I am dressing behind the bed. And it's working really well. And what I've decided to do is take the uh, drapery rod even further than I normally would. So the draperies end where the, the bed ends. So it really feels, it almost in a sense has this, tester or half tester. right i was gonna say that's really right. nice so does your bed cover the window at all or is it below the window well part of it covers the window the, we have very long windows they're the the original windows to the house and there's some stained glass in just little little squares in in the corners mm -hmm. so the window is pretty it's decorative but yeah it definitely the bed headboard comes up almost exactly to meet the sash. So it's a double sash window. So, oh, okay. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not so bad. So I have the top down, bottom up natural wovens there. So I just have them always sort of at half mast. So you're, you know, you're seeing, you don't see the back of the 
the headboard if you were looking from outside you see the end of the the you know the back of the uh blind so it works i mean it's the best way to deal with this room and i'm happiest in this position and um so i don't have any artwork behind it but i do have a very large painting on one of the solid walls and i it's a landscape and then i chose another smaller landscape so sort of keeping the theme of of the landscape paintings uh, just two of them in the room. Well, then that way you get to enjoy the landscapes while you're sitting in bed. So I think that's nice. And that makes sense. I like what you said, that you kind of used that window that was there and made it into kind of like a, like you said, like a tester bed with the curtains. Mm -hmm. And so make sure that those are the width of the bed. I love that idea. You know, sometimes when people are putting a bed under a window, the window is not centered on the wall or they just cannot center the bed under the window. And I think that's going to look odd if you cannot center the bed under the window. And one of the things yeah. I've done when I've had to deal with that is, as a designer, is just to move the bed so that it's uh, in the corner, so that it is uh, diagonal in the room. And that is a good way to get around that. And you can put some shutters behind it or just leave it like that. That is a good solution. That would be nicer than having it would drive me crazy if it was off. So, yes, I, I am lucky in that sense where it's, you know, if you measured it, you could see it's off a little bit. And one side is a little bit different than the other. But you, just to the, the naked eye, you really can't tell. So I'm fortunate in that situation that the window was pretty smack dab in the middle. So in this configuration, too, because before when the, room, the bed was on the other side, I had no room for proper nightstands on either side. So we have nightstands now. Now. It's very nice to have a nightstand, and especially if you have the room for it. They don't have to match. I would just suggest that they really should be the same height. Uh, that just seems to be visually nice for your eyes and sort of calming. Terrific if these can have drawers or if it's a cabinet. Uh, I have one that's a small dresser. It's a little East Lake dresser, and that's great. And I keep my T-shirts and whatnot in there, even though it's on Peter's side of the room. It's not my stuff in it. <laughs> How did that happen? I don't know. Just overflow. Uh, but if you like more of a minimalist look in your bedroom, floating nightstands are nice. And you don't even have any legs to it. You can have it. You can purchase something where you fix it to the wall. Or obviously, you could do something custom. You could even just do a nice shelf on either side. Uh, but it is nice to be able to put something there. It does balance out the bed. If you're a reader, or obviously it's just you need to have lighting, and we'll talk about that in a second, but you could have a place for a lamp or a sconce above it. So nightstands are terrific. Don't have to match, but shoot for the same height. Okay. I've finished everything I was going to talk about. Or do you have anything else? Well, I just wanted to touch on the lighting. Okay. As we talk in every room, and I think probably as important as in any room, Lighting is crucial in the bedroom. Don't think about it like, oh, the lighting's not that important because I'm in here in the dark most of the time <laughs> because the lighting is important. You definitely want to be on dimmers. You don't want to just have something overhead, like God forbid, a, a fan with a light and that's all you've got in the room. Add a lamp. It's going to change the way you feel about the room, even if you're able to just get one lamp in there on a dresser or something. Or if you can't get anything on a surface, try a um a standing lamp it can be one that maybe has the three there's so many different configurations but i'll just say the three bulbs you know obviously you can get it in all different looks but you can have one pointing up one pointing down and maybe one pointing where it's more of a task try in any way you can to get more sources of lighting in that room if you don't have at least three right now yeah i think that's good advice what are we defining today well we had a request for art deco Chloe from <laughs> Australia has been listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks, and it was so lovely to get her email, and she was telling us about her home, and she sent us some photos, and your home is beautiful, Chloe, and we're so excited to be able to give you some information about your predominant style, which is Art Deco. Okay. What I found out was it is also called Style Modern, mm. and it was a movement in decorative arts and architecture that originated in the 1920s, and it developed into a major style in Western Europe and the United States during the 30s. In fact, I remember my grandma's furniture 
was like stuck in the 30s. So she had a lot of Art Deco furniture in her house. And she had, I'm sure you've seen these, the vanity with the round mirror on it. Oh, my grandma too. I really? loved sitting at that vanity. Yeah. And even the, I, even the size of it were sort of rounded and the wood was burled. It was so mm-hmm. beautiful. I, I have often wondered what happened to that piece. <laughs> right. That's right. I don't know what happened to her piece either. Uh, because I was the youngest. I mean, I got the, I think I got like three pieces of chip china. So. Well, you didn't even have a bed. So. Uh, yeah. That's right. So I was happy to get, oh, look, a chip plate. Great. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, its name came from the, and I'm. this is a French phrase I'm getting ready to say, but I am not going to try to pronounce this the French way. So bear with me. It's. The Exposition International de Art Decoratif et Industrial Moderne, and it was held in Paris in 1925, where the style was first exhibited. So that's where the name came from. Art Deco design was supposed to be a very modern look at the time, and it included both, you know, really individually crafted luxury items and mass-produced items. And the designers were going for this really sleek, anti-traditional elegance. Because remember, this is after Victorian. This is after craftsman style. They were, and you know, Victorian was over the top. Then the craftsman style was very squared off. So this had lots of curves. And if you go and look at any of the movies from the 30s, you'll see there's lots of curved furniture there. Especially if you see any of the Poirot movies, that was, those were set in the 30s, and they always film them in these uh, period homes where everything's kind of set in the 30s, although, you know, ideally, well, although obviously there would have been houses older than that, but that's the way they do those movies. So if you watch that, you'll see a lot of Art Deco furniture. Some of the distinguishing features of Art Deco are simple, clean shapes, a streamlined look, and geometric forms. Uh, The characteristic features of the style reflected admiration for the modernity of the machine. So they were really, like I said, into very curved shapes and geometrics and kind of their vision of what the future would look like. And it really went out of fashion during World War II, but became popular again in the late 60s. And I'm seeing a resurgence lately, uh, not in a big way, but in some ways uh, Art Deco has come back into popularity. Well, I think every year for maybe the last three or four years when we've done our trend forecast, Art Deco is in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, somebody is declaring that it's coming back. So it's definitely around. And Chloe has done such a wonderful job in decorating her home using that style. And again, we are so pleased to hear from you. So if anybody else wants to shoot us an email, we'd love to hear from you as well. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing, and it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off, yes, that's 50% off, your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. 
So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. My crush today is something super fun that we've been watching. It's called The Reluctant Traveler. And it is starring and narrated by an actor, Eugene Levy. So it's a show where Eugene, who is... 75 years old. He's a great looking 75 year old guy. He was in American Pie and I guess several other things. You definitely would recognize his face. Well, Shit's Creek. He was in that. Oh, is, is he in that too? Oh, yes. Okay. So he is a reluctant traveler. So he said, like, Oh, what do I like to do when I go on trips? Usually, well, I really like the hotel and then I like to go out to dinner. <laughs> But he goes and he immerses himself in the place. He gets to know the local people. And it's just like a little, it's like a little tidbit. Like it's about a half hour long. And it's such a fun little show to be watching. He's very charming. He's got this great personality. And um, he seems at the end, you know, he's always like, he's afraid of the place and he's not sure and blah, blah, blah. And, but it's all real. Yes, I'm sure it's staged, but he does meet all these real people and they take him on these day trips and whatnot. It's terrific. I really enjoyed it. Maybe there's like six or eight episodes. And where can we find that? That is on Apple TV. That sounds like fun. Oh, I think you'll like it. Yeah. So my crush is, well, maybe more of a public service announcement. I know you always say a lot of times my crushes are practical, and this is a very practical item. Uh huh. So recently we had a very, did I, did I mention very expensive repair on our freezer? And pretty much it's like a brand new freezer on the inside. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So pretty much every moving part was replaced. Oh, kitchen or a separate freezer? No, it's the built-in one. So I couldn't really, it was going to be very expensive to replace it because it's built in. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And it matches the refrigerator next door. So if I replace it, I have to replace both of them. I'm like, so just, I said, because he looked at me like, are you sure you want to? I'm like, yeah, I don't really have a choice. Just do it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. So he said, you know, you really need to keep this, uh, the dust bunnies out from under here because he said that they kind of collect around the motor and then it kind of overheats. And he said, he seemed to think that that might have been a problem. Well, I didn't know I was supposed to clean that, the dust bunnies out from under there. And so he told me, he showed me this long brush he was using and he told me to get one to kind of clean it out every six months or so. And so I got one on Amazon. I'm going to share the link to the one I got. It's less than $10. And this is also really good to to clean out your dryer vent because that can be a problem because the lint does build up in there. You have the little thing to catch it, the little screen, but some of it does get out and uh, it can catch fire. So it's a very valuable thing that I don't think a lot of us think about. Now I'm thinking about it. (laughs) No. Well, just I got to get one. You need to get one and then you'll clean them both out and then you'll be done. And then you'll you can check that one off your list. Oh, I need a saving us so expensive. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that is not a fun repair. I once had to repair a built in microwave oh. in our old kitchen. And that was a nightmare because I couldn't find one that was the right size. Oh, right. Right. If it was the right width, it was too deep. Oh, so I. I feel what you had to go through. And then you just had to spend a ton of money to, you know, basically get the same thing back. Yeah. And three trips. Working. Three trips. Oh, oh and then trips. they were making it sound like, oh, we're going to have to order this. And we don't know how long it's going to be. And then uh, we were looking at renting a deep freeze because meanwhile, my food's melting, you know, by the second. Aww. And so we ended up just buying a little deep freeze because honestly, it was not that much more than just renting one. And we put it on yeah. the back porch. So now I have an extra deep freeze. So, <laughs> Oh, 
That they always find bodies in those. So I don't know. I don't oh, know. Oh, <laughs> now you have to tell me that. Really? <laughs> well, yeah, and a lot of mystery shows, you know, they're oh, look in the freezer. Come on. Oh, You've seen cop oh. shows where they're looking in the freezer. I did not oh. need that, Kelly. <laughs> oh, well, go check that. You need more than a dust bunny brush for that. Okay. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. As always, it was a lot of fun. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.